Manitoba. I'm a home cook turned restaurateur, and I have a restaurant located here in Winnipeg called Feast Cafe Bistro, which serves modern dishes rooted in traditional First Nation foods. I'm so excited to be hosting the very first Indigenous Chefs Cook-Up. It's truly going to be a feast for your eyes. I'm excited to introduce who's my little helper today, my niece. I have three grown children, but they're all working today, so she agreed to help me today. So I'll introduce you to Sage. Hi, my name is Sage. I love cooking, so I'm very excited to be here today. Yes, she's always been helpful in my kitchen. She helps at home, she loves doing dishes. She's definitely a chef in the making. So let's get right to it. Um, I'm gonna introduce you to our fellow chefs and colleagues. We're all part of uh, a team called ICANN, which stands for Indigenous Culinary Association of Nations. And um, they are my colleagues and my friends, and I'm excited to be doing this with them and uh, being able to see inside of their homes. So I'm gonna turn it over to Chef Joseph. Executive Chef Kokum, and I am also the Indigenous Culinary Advisor for Centennial College, as well as the Acting Chair for ICANN. So today we're just we're bringing everybody together to um, to focus on food, and food brings everybody into their homes, and everybody's just happy, and all their families around them, their friends. So we're just trying to bring that into everybody's homes during this time. Um, today I'm just going to prepare a pan seared. Uh, rainbow trout with uh, spring vegetables, a little bit of wild leeks that we harvested, um, and some a butternut squash puree with a I have make herb squash, spaghetti squash, uh, butternut squash, and just some uh, simple herbs, just uh, a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'm going to turn it over to our, my fellow chef, Cezanne Nottoy. Hey everyone, um, quick and awake. Bonjour tout le monde. C'est Jim de Jeanne Kaslin. Tagana Kandusek, Tagana TV to the GK. Hi everyone, my name is Cezanne. I'm from Rapid Lake, but I live in Kitagan CB. I am um, the owner, <coughs> excuse me, I'm, <coughs> nervousness is getting to me. Um, I, I'm uh, the owner of Wawati Catering, and I'm super honored to be here to represent. Um, our Anishinaabe medium that uh, we're gonna prepare today. Um like so uh today I'm gonna prepare sorry <coughs> today I'm gonna prepare some sturgeon that was harvested um by a fellow community member and it's gonna be a, a sturgeon soup and on to Jenny. Oh my goodness, I'm Jenny Lassard. I'm executive chef at Wanuskewan Heritage Park, just outside of Saskatoon. We're on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis, of which I am part of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. I'm the chef, um, secretary of ICANN, and this is my first time cooking with this crew and it's virtual, so I'm super excited. My dish combines three plants from the sunflower family. I'm doing a sun choke gnocchi, so a nice kind of rough rustic pasta with um, dandelion greens and sunflower seed pesto. On to Chef Paul in Vancouver. Hey guys, how's it going out there today? Paul Natral here from Mr. Bannock. I got Marcus Natral and Ariana Natral. Uh, we're cooking up some Indigenous fusion today here in West Vancouver. Uh, stay tuned and see what we do. Back to Chef Krista. Matt, all of us chefs, I'm going to let Sage introduce the dish that she's going to be cooking today. So here you go, dear. You can go ahead and say what it is. Buy some skewers with wild garlic, maple, ginger, bergamot, Baby asparagus, wild rice, blend infused with, with sweet grass and garden chives. Our forage ingredients are wild garlic from Auntie's backyard and chives from her heart, from her, her garden. From her garden, I am going to harvest today. 
So our forged ingredients, each one of us chefs have many forged ingredients, but ours today, she's going to forge in the backyard in a little bit. So let's uh, get to the next um, information here. Sorry, I'm nervous too, Susan. <laughs> uh, so who will be the winner? Uh, you as the viewers get to decide and choose which chef slash dish that you like best. On the comments below in your feed, you can, um, tell, we're gonna tell you first to announce the winner. Also, we have some prizes for one lucky, uh, get, uh, I guess, one lucky winner. Um, you will see, receive one virtual one-on-one cook-off with the chef of your choice, a cooking class. And also we have some indigenous um, gifts from some uh, local artists that you will win as well. So to be eligible to win, all you have to do is sign up to our email list and we'll give you till the end of the week to sign up and announce winners uh, next week. So with no further ado, let's get cooking and I'm gonna let Sage do the countdown. Three, two, one, cook! cook. <laughs> All right, Darren. <laughs> so I'm gonna check on Sage for a minute here. She's just, uh, she's got a little system going here. So I'm just gonna check on Sage for a minute here. She's just, uh, she's got a little system going here. She's throwing some sweet grass, which here's the sweet grass. Can I give it a smell? Smells really good. Sweet grass represents love and kindness. So we threw some down in the water. Let's see what everybody's doing here. So, Jenny, <laughs> I'm kind of very curious about your gnocchi. Is it gnocchi, right? You said? Carol, your dishes. Yeah, so instead of gnocchi is traditionally prepared with potatoes, so I'm using sunchokes. So they're one of the seven sisters family of plants, and um, they're native to North America. Now, I didn't have, I, I used um, sunchokes that I had frozen and processed earlier in the year, but this is a, just a whole intact um, sunchoke. It's otherwise known as Jerusalem artichokes, and it's um, very high, or sorry, a low glycemic index high in protein and fiber, and a compound called inulin, which is actually a prebiotic. So it's a really good choice for people who maybe have diabetes or on a lower carb diet. Just don't overdo it because um, you may have some gastrointestinal fun. <laughs> but in lower doses, it's absolutely just perfect. And it looks like a, it's a tuber, so it almost looks like a ginger root. And you really have to get in there. It takes a long time to peel it. And then what I've done is I've just steamed it and then run it through a food processor, added some egg, a little bit of flour, salt, and pepper, and that's it. So I'm just going to make that into a little dough here. And then we're going to roll it out into kind of snakes, which is super fun. Kids will love this. We'll give you the recipes later. And then we're going to cut it into little, little um, pieces, tie it with a fork, and boil it, and then toss it with our, sun, sun, uh, our dandelion greens pesto. I want to try that. The next time we see, we'll have to maybe make that. <laughs> yeah. uh, Chef Paul, I see you chopping away there. Tell me a bit about your ingredients and why you chose them. So uh, today I got some uh, harvest fiddleheads, and uh, we're going to put that on a creamy polenta. I got a Korean barbecue duck sausage with a homemade uh, sourdough bannock bun and uh, corn on the cob. Um. That sturgeon? Um, yeah. Or is that your son? Uh, I have a little confession. So um, my confession is, yes, it is a stitching that was a gift from a community member. He harvested it in a river, and then he actually placed it in his nearby creek to put fresh. fresh. So that's why it was a little bit easier to catch the sturgeon. Sorry, guys, I'm a little trickster. But yes, 
Here is um, the piece of Neme sturgeon. Estorgeon, I think that's how you say it en français. And um, this is uh, what I'll be preparing for you guys today. So, um, super simple menu. Like, you know, we grew up with potatoes, onions, and a protein. And um, we may do with what we had. Very, like, uh, inspired by my cooking, but I'm going to dedicate this dish to my chumwa wate because he loved onions. So basically it's potatoes, onions, and the meat. So really simple, like I'm not, I didn't, I'm not even gonna caramelize these onions. Basically I'm <clears throat> putting them in hot water and I'm gonna bring that to a simmer. And same thing with my potatoes, I'm gonna add my potatoes to that. And while I wait for this to cook up, I'm gonna pass it over to, back to Krista, I think. <laughs> Um, Chef Joseph, so I, I have, I know you have a little one at home and, um, describe what a dinner scene is like at your home with a little one. Uh, it's just based, uh, cooking as healthy as possible and just whatever he wants to eat. Uh, cause five-year-old is pretty picky. Um, so at first it was a lot of hot dogs and mac and cheese and stuff like that, but now his palate is actually getting a lot better. We're he actually enjoys, he's always enjoyed sushi. So that's his biggest thing that he's on right now. Um, yeah, but it's just, be, uh, it's, it's been, a, uh, sometimes it's challenging cooking for him, but uh, sometimes it's not, uh, especially when he's in the kitchen and like cooking alongside you and baking cakes for mommy for uh, Mother's Day and uh, uh, cupcakes for auntie and stuff. But uh, he enjoys it um, and he knows this is what I do for a living. This is what I do. This is exactly how, uh, it's all he knows that I do, right? So and that's a good thing. Uh, but today, the, other than that, like today I'm just making a pan seared, a pan seared bagel trout, uh, stuffed with wild leeks. And uh, wild leeks, a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of dill, salt and pepper. I'm gonna quickly sear it off. And uh, spring vegetables, so I got some nice carrots here, like a tricolor carrots, heirloom carrots. I got uh, squash going right now, where it's going to be pureed. Uh, and he's actually right here. Right. So much bigger than the last time I saw him. Yeah, so he's going on, uh, he's doing a lot of FGTV yeah. stuff. So, uh, my wife is uh, behind the camera. On, like filming uh, the our action shots that we're having, yeah. But uh, it's going to be a good, uh, it's going to be a good endeavor that we're doing right now. So, yeah. so I think that's about it. I just got to get back to cooking and make sure that uh, everything looks pretty well, good. Okay. One more question because I'm kind of curious because you were out yesterday foraging. Uh, can you tell us what you were foraging and you know that experience? Yeah. Well, we just went out for leeks. Uh, they weren't quite ready uh, just yet. They're pretty small. So, um, but I did harvest uh, some wild leeks last about a week and a half ago that we hung on the windowsill and dried and they're pretty good to go now. Uh, so I'm just going here. So, so I just hung them to dry, so they're just nice and flaky. Um, you can actually uh, blend this up with just a little bit of salt and you'll have like wild leek salt. And yeah, so it's pretty good. Like it's, it's a very versatile vine. There we have Get back to Sage here for a moment. So what Sage, tell us, what did you just do? Did you just create a marinade, right? Yes. Yeah. And, so. and so Sage, our local Manitoba bison, uh, anytime I have an opportunity to cook um, our local bison, I do. But you can definitely use the same marinade recipe for venison or moose or even beef. Um, so we have, um, Sage did it all pretty much, right? She just has to go forage right now. So I will talk a little bit and you want to go get your, uh, she's going to go out into the, into the yard and forage. So you probably won't see her doing that, but viewers, you will, but none of the chefs will. Um, so yeah, some of the ingredients that I use today, I really, um, try to use a lot of, uh, dried teas more in my marinades or in my sauces. So today in this, um, marinade for our bison spirit, I'm using bergamot and it tastes like, almost kind of like oregano. Bag. There's just so many uh, different uses that you can use for them. Uh, for cooking, as you can see, look, they have these beautiful uh, purple leaves. 
And um, it tastes like oregano, which is so it's good in like tomato sauces or chicken, meat, wild game dishes. Um, even in salads, I've thrown it in like in my Greek salad. Instead of oregano, I've used the bergamot. Um, went out to the yard. <laughs> Oh, I have a little sage to help me. She's awesome. Oh my goodness. We need those young indigenous chefs. So um, here's my little rope of sun choke gnocchi. You can take a bench scraper, which I have, or a knife, whatever you like. And then because we want the pasta to kind of soak up the sauce in a really nice way, we're just taking a fork and with the times, we're making little dandelion pesto receptacles in here. <laughs> so this is a really nice job. A child probably as young as four could, could handle this. I think that you could make this gluten-free should you wish to, you can use amaranth flour or quinoa flour, maybe even rice flour. So viewers go ahead and try that and let me know how that works. And then we're just going to toss these into some boiling, boiling salted water. And really, they're really nice and small. So they're only going to take about four minutes to fully cook. And after that, we're going to pan toast them with Red River breadcrumbs and garlic and butter. Okay, I'm just finishing these off. And when you see me next, I'll be making my pesto. Nice. All right, so can you hear me now? So Sage is back and um, let's show the camera what, what you have here. So we have, these are the wild, um, wild garden. And oh my goodness, smell. it smells amazing. It smells so good. And actually I was gifted some wild garlic way back when and uh, probably at least five years ago. So I put it in the garden and it actually comes up every year and now I'm able to share it. Uh, because it just keeps growing and growing and growing. So that's uh, going to be part of our uh, marinade is um, see you'll cut up some of the some of the wild garlic here and throw it in our marinade. And um, just one more little tip on the bergamot. Um, the medicinal purposes for bergamot is they soothe muscles. They would uh, our elders would make an ointment out of it um, and rub it into the muscles or you can use you can steep it in a tea for coughs and colds and sore throats. So uh, with these times, I think it would be really good to sip on bergamot tea every day um, with everything going on. So Sage is gonna just add that um, into the marinade. Yeah, go ahead, dear, just cut it up. So we have nine indigenous ingredients in our dish today, which um, you know I think that's how I cook at home and I have cooked like that for years. I'm not a trained chef, I've never gone to culinary school. So it's mostly how many indigenous ingredients can I grow in my garden? can I infuse into everyday dishes to feed my family? And that's how I developed uh, all of my recipes. And most of the recipes at the restaurant are very home cooked, family style meals. And uh, so that's just how I like to cook. Let's turn it over to Sezen. Where are you? Where, where, what's going on over there? Oh. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up uh, the um, sturgeon. The um, sturgeon, the nemeh. Sorry, I was trying to think of the word I was, what was going to say in the map, but anyways, so um, sturgeon, um, as you can see, the way we've um, removed the bones or the scales is, this is the back right here, the sides right here, their bones are actually really big, so um, it's going to be easy to eat, it's not like a uh, carp, which is a pretty, pretty bony fish. Um, I'm going to make little sturgeon steaks. And it's pretty hard to cut because it's like this flesh, as you can see, it's like tough, tough, tough right there. So, um, and it doesn't help that I got a crappy knife. God darn it. Changing a knife. See, that's the... So, um, 
I don't want you guys just to watch me struggle with this piece of Mom. fish. Um, I'm gonna pass it over to Joseph. <laughs> but anyways, this is how they look. I'll make more later. So, can you hear me? You an eye tag video, so we'll be back. Oh, Time can be a test. A test of our character, our nature, our spirit. For thousands of years and countless generations, our people have survived the tests of hardship and separation. And we will survive these times as well. And so will you. Although we dream of the times when we can explore and discover and experience. Right now, we patiently pray for health and healing and for wisdom to guide our decisions. Our future is grown from our past. And when the time comes to reconnect, we will do so with a stronger sense of community, we will be united in our desire to engage in experiences that bring us together. Our story awaits, and when the time is right, we welcome you to share in it. Virtually yours, the Indigenous Tourism Experiences of Canada. Like you were saying, Joseph, you know, it's hard to get our younger kids to eat, um, you know, their vegetables or different foods. Uh, but I always found with my kids, you put anything on a skewer, they'll want to eat it. And like you said, including them in the kitchen. Sage, do you like, are you going to eat all of this? Yes. <laughs> do you like bison meat? Uh, yes. Yeah. And you like, do you like asparagus? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good girl. She likes her greens. So I'm looking at Paul here. Paul, where are you at? What are you doing? Um, tell us a little bit, a little bit about why did you become a chef and why is culinary a great career choice? Can you tell them I can't hear him? I can't. Hey. Yeah, sorry about that. So I'm doing a barbecue duck sausage. Uh, from my friends at Legends Hall and uh, being indigenous, like food is always a go-to for our communities. Like it doesn't matter where you're from, like from here in Vancouver, all the way to out back East where you guys are from, like we all share food and yeah, just growing as a person and a chef to learn to make and create uh, kind of not new, but different things with our food culture. And uh, my kids really take a liking into what I do. Like they helped me make some of this stuff today. Thank you guys. Uh, we're pretty excited about this. It's a sourdough bannock bun. And uh, yeah, so I got some creamy polenta. We're going to fire off the barbecue duck sausage soon. So we're almost there. Thank you. All right. Hey, Joseph, where, where are you at? And let me come up with a question for you. Uh, let's see here. Um, hey, what's it like being a professional chef? Because I know you also are now an instructor at the culinary school. Tell us a little bit about that. That's exciting. Yeah, so uh, being a chef, it's it's either one of those things where you either you love it or you don't. Uh, and I am fortunate enough that I love my job where it's not even a job. Um, yeah, but uh, in educating our youth and just the whole education module of cooking and learning from the land and not doing the whole textbook learning is something that we, um, that we're striving to do, right? So um, when you learn with your hands on, it's very, 
it's more for me it's more educational i've always been a hands-on learner i'm not good at textbooks, textbooks. No, i don't retain information that way i retain more information by just by doing so um so that's exactly what i'm doing I, that's probably why i like and i love cooking is it's, i work with my hands constantly almost 24 hours a day basically uh, and just going that way um and just learning our stories, right? Learning our history through food is very, it's very important. Uh, seeing the whole residential school system, what it done to our people and uh, Indian day school stuff and how a lot of our elders lost their language. So, and I think, I, I feel it's my job to preserve our heritage through food and it's our job as chefs and educators, right? So, so doing that and just learning from the land, right? Because the where you live, it's it'll sustain you for years to come. You can live off of one acre of land as a single family household, but um, yeah, and just learning from it, right? So working with your hands, learning, um, and just instructing everybody that way. Uh, yeah. So, but right now I'm working on what I'm doing right now is just at home, working from home. So everything switched to online, online learning. Uh, it's very difficult to teach culinary school online. Yeah, but other than that, it's been, it's been very educational for me uh, to learn all of, to learn everything that we need to do. So, but other than that, it's, it's, it's been a very good experience. Um, yeah, so right now I'm just plating up, I'm just gonna start my plating soon. So I already mashed up my butternut my squash puree. So I put the wild leeks in there that we harvested. Uh, we got some some fennel pollen here, some smoked Spanish paprika, uh, and I'm wrapping the the sorry I was gonna say tuna. <laughs> I'm wrapping the uh, rainbow trout in just uh, a little bit of wild leeks and some chives, a little bit of paprika, a little bit of fennel pollen, and I want to start plating very very soon. Love it. Thanks, Chef. Always love your beautiful stories and all your wisdom. So um, where are you at, Jenny, with your dish? I have my gnocchi all um, toasted up. And we added a little bit of just a little dandelion flour, which you can also see behind my ear. And a little bit of chives from my garden, salt and pepper, and lots of butter and garlic. So that's just simmering away. And now we're going to make the pesto. So the sunstrokes are native to North America, as are certain types of sunflowers. So we're going to use a sunflower seed in place of the traditional pine nut that you'd find in a pesto. You can see I'm measuring like super carefully. That's about a cup. And then dandelions um, are not native to North America. They're said to have arrived on the shoes of settlers or possibly even as seeds for early greens. And now we know they're everywhere, just like the Métis. So <laughs> I'm calling my dish Lisele, which is Machip for the sun. So I'm hoping it really shines like the sun. And basically dandelions are the only thing that we can forage right now. I was out on the land at Wanuskewin um, just last week, and we do have a little bit of nettle coming up. So you could do this with a stinging nettle instead of dandelion greens if you wanted to. Um, I blanched the dandelion greens because if you just did it raw like you would a basil leaf it's going to be a little bit stringy and also when you blanch it just quickly throw it in boiling water take it out put it in an ice bath you get this gorgeous green color so you can kind of see the difference between the um fresh dandelion greens and the blanched ones you really want to make sure you're harvesting your greens from an organic yard you don't want to go anywhere that could possibly have been sprayed and it does take a little while to clean them. You don't want a big chunk of gravel in your teeth as you're eating your pasta. And then we're going to add just a little bit of salt. Maybe that's more than a little bit. Some Parmesan cheese, a little bit of pepper. And from the garden. So when I was, um, had little kids and I was you know, carrying them around all the time, I really fell in love with scissors as a kitchen tool. So it may not be a traditional chef -y thing, but I absolutely love scissors for just those little shortcuts. Just make sure you have one use food scissors. 
Nice. Okay. And of course, garlic, 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 and oil, full press sunflower oil. Beautiful. There you go. Okay, and now I'm not going to bother you with me blending this, but when we come back, I'm going to start tasting it. Sounds good. Sazen, how are you? How's your dish coming along there? Oh, it's coming on. It's coming on. Beautiful. I have, uh, I have a helper now. Um, so just really quickly, you know what? I'm going to add some, some, one of my favorite super duper secret um, ingredient into all my cooking. Everyone, pay attention, but close your eyes. It's a secret. I'm going to put just a little bit of syrup that I've made from my sugar bush this um this spring i just wanted to add a little bit of that because i find that maple syrup like uh you know binds everything and it's going to give a little bit of sweetness to the soup because i like just a little bit of sweetness so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add these little sturgeon steaks as you i'm going to put it into my soup but first before we put it into the soup i just want to say that the onions are now soft. The potatoes are also. Sorry, I can't even. The mess steaks. You add the sturgeon steaks at the last minute because uh, fish it doesn't take long to cook. So that's what I'll do. And you actually you don't boil your water. You leave it simmer because you don't want to break the. <coughs> The, the steaks. So here you go. So I'm gonna just tell you quickly why I chose the sturgeon and I hope I don't butcher the story. My dad told me um, the sturgeon story and it's why I, I chose it today. They're spawning, actually they, they spawn when the alger budding. And uh, just a little quick story if I don't butcher like I said, sturgeon and pike they wanted to marry the sturgeon wanted to marry off his daughter the pike was the perfect suitor so they had to race around the lake but then they crossed the they had to cross the cliff but then the pike <laughs> fell and shattered his head and anyways he was okay they're sitting by a fire and that you know what never mind i'm just gonna butcher this but i'm thank you for listening for like 15 seconds while my fish cooks um, I'll write down the story when I'm better at it. <laughs> Thank you. You know what? Uh, um, okay, that was side, horrible. I made myself some medicinal tea to go along with my coconut cooking. Um, you know what? Tea says, yay. <laughs> yay. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, Seven. You always have the greatest stories, too, and you always make us laugh. <laughs> so uh, thanks for always bringing the energy. So Sage uh, and I are almost done our dish as well. Um, I think wild rice, so many people ask me, how do you cook wild rice? They make it sound like it's such a complicated thing. And it really isn't. The way I like to cook my wild rice is how you would cook pasta. And so as you can see here, you know, I just have a lot of water. I have about one cup of wild rice and this is beautiful wild rice from uh, Northern Manitoba comes from an indigenous community, uh, family owned. So I'm really proud to support my local uh, communities with our wild rice, both at home and at the restaurant. But mm -hmm. um, I just put it in water and I boil it uh, like so. I don't soak, or, soak it overnight or anything. Um, it's starting to kind of puff up beautifully. And uh, in this little packet here, uh, it's like a tea bag is where I have all of the sweet grass, um, just cause I don't want little pieces of it, um, you know, cause they are a bit woody. And the sweet grass um, gives it just a nice, sweetness and a, it gives us a nice aroma to the rice and uh, it's a good complement to that kind of earthiness that the rice has. So the rice is just about done. Um, on a day like today, you never know what the weather's going to be like in Manitoba. So um, you can barbecue your skewers, but I think every single person in every household should have one cast, cast iron pan. I actually found these cast iron pans in my parents' old camper. They had been sitting in there for 20 years, unused. And um, I actually absolutely love them. 
And uh, so you can see here with that beautiful maple syrup, I'm getting a nice caramelization um, on the skewers. And so, you know, nice high heat. And um, they're just coming along beautifully. Sage did an amazing job with skewering that, almost better than I could skewer. So, and she's just doing a fantastic job. Um, I do have some pre-cooked white rice as well. I just find, um, I like to mix a bit of wild, wild rice with the white rice, um, just so that, um, just a couple of different textures, so that we'll see on the plate. So I think we need to check in here with um, Paul. Paul, to see where you're at with your dish, Paul. How yep, things going just, on? Uh, finished plating. I got, uh, just doing the garnishes now. I got the, the barbecue duck sausage uh, or Korean barbecue duck sausage <clears throat> and uh, planta with a fiddlehead. Beautiful. How did you find fiddleheads? I and looked for fiddleheads. I guess you have a better... Uh, you know, do the do fiddleheads grow locally in BC too then? I got a lot of, like, a, there's some, a lot of friends that go and do these things. I don't do any of the forging. Like, I leave that to those professionals. Uh, my stuff is the cooking, and uh, this is what I got today. So I'm almost there. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> Where are we at, Joseph, or how are you doing on your plating? How's your dish coming along? Are we getting there? I'm just starting plating now. Yeah, so what I did was I just quickly stuffed the trout with a little bit of wild leeks. Uh, a little wild leeks, just touch of dill. And just wrapped it and cooked it right up until it was about medium. You don't want to overcook fish because it's just going to dry right out and yeah right now yeah and uh my veg are going right now for the dish the plating's almost done i'm just getting everything ready right now here yeah uh yeah but it's been it's going good um right now is the time to go hunting for fiddleheads wild leeks They're incredible and you can bake things in them, whatever you like. So I have my pesto done and look at that. It looks just like a real pesto. I'm just gonna give it one last take because we know that the most important skill in cooking is tasting your food. I love it and I love the little crunch that the sesame or the sunflower seeds give. Mm, so we're just gonna take our sunchoke gnocchi. The reason I chose gnocchi is I grew up um, in the bush north of Larange, Saskatchewan. We didn't have TV. We didn't even have a phone until I was about 15, torture for a teenager. Um, and what I did instead of watching TV is I cooked and I foraged things. So somehow I heard about gnocchi and determined to learn how to do it pre-YouTube. So 40 years later, kind of okay at it. So there we have our dandelion green pesto on our sunchoke gnocchi. I'm just gonna plate that up here, add a little. I kept some of the raw dandelions, chip and knotted them a little bit, and we'll just use that as a little garnish. It'll be kind of bitter. We'll offset that with some of the sunflower seeds. And a little flour, just to give it a nice lisa la glow. There we go. Oops. See, uh, Paul, your boys doing <laughs> Paul, your boys uh, helping out there. What, what are you guys doing? Are you pretty much plated up? Are you ready to go? Families, it's good to go. You're good. Dazen, are you plated, ready to go? I'm pretty much ready. I'm just going to put the finishing touches on. 
Okay, beautiful. Sage and I's dish is ready to go here. And I'm sure she's excited to try it. She's been um, helping me all day. Uh, again, uh, with our marinade, we had um, some lemon juice and you could use vinegar if you wanted. We had some maple in there, some bergamot, some ginger, gar uh, wild garlic. And um, you can marinate from anywhere from one hour to two hours to overnight. I find if you're using a game meat, it's just, you know, that little bit of vinegar in there or lemon juice just tenderizes it. There's soy sauce you can leave it out if you want but you know just marinating meats um, for a long period of time this is a very um, inexpensive cut of bison and I think um, with marinades it allows you to um, you know not break the bank with uh, purchasing bison or um, beef and marinate it um, for a long period of time and then it's tender and juicy so I think if we're all ready um, to uh, start tasting our dishes um, don't forget, chefs, make sure you take a picture of it first uh, before everybody digs into it. Um, and to all of you watching, watching thanks, for, thanks joining for joining us. us. And um, I look forward to reading all your comments and, and, and seeing what you guys had to say and how you enjoyed this experience. Uh, this is the first time for all of us. So uh, it's been a success as far as I can say and see. And uh, so make sure you vote on um, what dish you would want to try. And, um, and we will uh, announce the winner for the dish in 48 hours. And we'll also announce uh, towards the end of the week, the winner of the cook, uh, the virtual cooking class with the chef of your choice and those beautiful indigenous um, products from some of our local artists. And um, you can connect with us on social uh, media at ITAC, which stands for Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada. ICANN, Indigenous Culinary Association of uh, Nations. We have a Facebook channel, we have um, Instagram and Twitter as well. So um, I don't know, if, did I get a picture? <laughs> I don't know if I haven't had got a picture yet. So I will uh, take a picture. Did you take a picture? Sorry, I, I gotta take my picture. So uh, if, if anybody else wants to say goodbye and um, jump in, I guess. Let's see, Joseph, if you wanna close up for, for me a little bit while I take my picture. Yeah. So thank you everybody for showing your support on indigenous food and indigenous culinary and supporting us as chefs. Uh, my wife and son are going to taste our dish right now that we made. Okay. This looks amazing. It smells amazing. And my son came running because of the smell and he can't wait to try this. Unfortunately, he's camera shy. Let's mm. try those. That is really good. Mm. You sure you don't want to try a bite? Oh, this is delicious. delicious. So there we go. So I'm going to pass it on to our secretary of ICANN, Jenny Lassart. Really good. Hello, I just drew my partner Aja in here for a taste and he, what do you think? Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait till we can all be together again till I can serve you again at Ron's Stable Heritage Park. We just had the fourth of our um, conservation bison herd bison calves born on Mother's Day. So when we're all given the all clear to gather again, I hope to see you there. And I really hope you all experiment with indigenous ingredients. I'm sure I, I speak for myself and probably the others that we are welcome to questions and emails about different ingredients, foraging and indigenous cuisine. So happy cooking and be well. Mm. <laughs> mm. Thanks Jenny for sharing. Mm. We have big bites in our mouth right now. <laughs> so, mm. Sage. How is it? It is so good. It's so extremely tender. I can taste that wild garlic. I mean, it's so much more flavorful than regular garlic. And um, I absolutely love wild rice and fresh chives from the garden. It's delicious. Is it good? Did you like it? Yeah. Are you gonna, are you gonna take some, want to take some home? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you Sage for being such a great help for me today. Thank you. Paul? There we go. They're, they're just going to try a bite of it. Go ahead, Marcus. 
that one? Either one. I don't like that. <laughs> So we got uh, the roasted corn with uh, honey garlic butter. Uh, we got the creamy polenta with the fiddle head. And then the Korean barbecue sausage with uh, barbecue sauce and kimchi uh, finished with a little sesame seeds. guys enjoying mm -hmm. so good they got their Aren't you so lucky? <laughs> you're so lucky to have a chef like your dad paul at home teaching you all this great cooking jenny how was your dish what kind of hard to say about your own food but i am absolutely loving this that kind of the crispiness of the the gnocchi and then the bitterness of the the raw greens and the pesto, I absolutely love the pesto. I think you can probably make this pesto and freeze it. I'm going to try that. And something I forgot to mention is you can roll out the gnocchi, um, put it on a baking sheet, freeze that off, and then put them in bed, uh, zip off bags for later. So when your family's, you're not sure what you want to do, go out to your backyard, gather some dandelion greens, cook up that gnocchi, and you have dinner. Um, I forgot to tell you about the Red River um, breadcrumbs. So I just make a, a bread with um, two cups of cooked Red River cereal in lieu of two cups of the water and I make a, a cinnamon bun dough, pizza dough, whatever. So I just toasted that up with some garlic and it adds another little bit of level of crunch. Mm. Sazen, Sazen, how is your soup? I wish I was having some soup right now. It's so cloudy and a little cold. And I know how wonderful your sturgeon is. How's your meal over there? How's everyone liking it? Uh, clearly my soup is better than my storytelling. <laughs> um, it's my son, uh, my daughter Quill slash tech support. And I also have a sage in my kitchen. <laughs> um, at the end of the guys. What do you think of Namant Nabubi with Chigagamishi Badek? Nokobun, it's good. <laughs> it, <laughs> I guess it's good. <laughs> you, Jim? <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Delicious. Well, um, I approve, but I just wanted to mention really quickly the spine um, is actually my favorite part because it's like super crunchy. I'm trying to get to it right now. Anyways, thank you for watching, everyone. Um, made me super nervous. Um, oh, sorry. I guess I was a bad angle. I, I need my tech support. I just want to say thank you to everyone watching and um, vote for whomever you, you know, thought the cutest was. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyways, um, okay. thank you for watching, everyone. Miigwe chegi na Oh. Does anyone else want any? Does anyone else want to say anything? I just want to thank everyone um, from the ITAC team, especially for making this happen. Such a great support, and you inspire us uh, every day. And uh, thank you to all my fellow chefs. Um, this has actually been really fun. I was a little bit nervous, and uh, I, I look forward to doing this again. And and I just love seeing your home, and I know that is where the heart is. And uh, so, thank you all the viewers that tuned in. Um, vote for your favorite dish that you'd like to cook at home. And uh, if anyone else wants to say anything, they can. But otherwise, I'm signing off. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thanks for everybody. You guys all did good. It was a uh, very fast 30 minutes. And, uh, yeah, time flies when you're having fun. Thanks to all the viewers and the whole team from ITAC and all of you guys, too. It was a pleasure cooking with you guys. Uh, just like you guys said, I can't wait till this is over so we can get back together and uh, just cook all of our awesome foods. You guys have a great day, and uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.
With the top notch rock, with the rap in the middle of a riot. Lines to the vibe, and the bears go wild every time I come around. Yeah, they know my style. Arrive with the highlights, looking like I have to go and hit them in a minute. I'm about to go and get a single, sick of all lyrics that I hear. I'm not there, I'm right here with the stat, don't care. Cause I lit it just to get a feel of what it's like when the music starts to reach that limit. I'm in it ever since the boot town taught me how to get down. I would never let down. I go get it, get it, oh no, get it, get it, oh no, get it, get it, oh no, get it, get it, oh. No, Oh no, cause I feel it Just another native on the come up Better say my name so you know who did it Ever since a boob town taught me how to get down Now I never let down, I go Ever since the first time I started to come around They know I will never fail Step up to the team from a small res town They know I will never fail I've been chilling with the fam all day They know I will never fail This right here is just a vibe out Hey, I will never fail Cause I'm with it Anybody hear me, I'm a native from the reservation Lyrics come together, I'm killing I will never slow us down this has been a run around, take a look around, you will see what's missing I ain't messing with you dummies cause you never understand what it takes like it's all a game I've been looking for the real ones, tell me if you see one, things are just not the same I'm under the impression that in each and every session I've been sharing my affection and it's a part of my direction I can feel the tension when I start to ask a question, is it really supposed to be this way? The words are like a weapon You will see the reason that we never went away, you will see me leaving all my people here to stay You will see that this is stolen land and all my people on the reservation living with the trauma every day I would never fail I would never fail. I would never fail. I would never fail. Cause I lit it just to get a feel of what it's like when the music starts to reach that limit. I'm in it ever since the boot town taught me how to get down. I would never let down. I go get it, get it. Oh no, 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 cause I feel it. Just another native on the come up, better say my name so you know who did it. Ever since the boot town taught me how to get down. I would never let down. I go get it. Time I started to come around, they know I will never fail. Step up to the team from a small res town, they know I will never fail. I've been chilling with the fam all day, they know I will never fail. This right here is just a vibe out, hey, I will never fail. Welcome to the hot spot, hit him with the top notch rock, with the rap in the middle of a riot. Lions to the vibe, and the bears go wild every time I come around, yeah, they know my style. Arrive with the highlights, looking like I have to go and hit him in a minute. I'm about to go and get a single, sick of all lyrics that I hear, I'm not there. I'm right here with the stat don't care.